Welcome to all of you present and to all online. Trust that uh, you are surviving the heat of the last two days. I saw a news report to say that the Western Cape was the hottest place on earth yesterday. (laughs) Even warmer than the Middle East. I believe places above Paul reached 45 degrees yesterday. That's quite hectic. So, we uh, are hoping over the next few weeks, uh, in anticipation of the government relaxing restrictions further on our gatherings, that we will be able to incorporate the children into a normal worship for at least the first part of the service. So, we're hoping that we can continue to add different aspects of church life back into our services and into our weekly schedules over the next uh, few weeks and perhaps months or so. So this morning I want to, by means of introduction, say that for nearly two years now we have been on the defensive in terms of dealing with the impact of COVID. We have to be honest and say that self-preservation and protection was of vital importance. And I fully understand that COVID is not something of the past yet. And I've heard a number of experts during last week say that no one can really predict what's going to happen next. But as a local Pastor, I'm wanting to say to us as a church that we should no longer be on the defensive. It's time for us to... (laughs) After two years of suffering loss and trying to maintain, it's now time to get on the front foot and start to rebuild. It really is time to rebuild the church. It's time for the church to function more holistically once again. It's time to reconnect and give expression to our life as the body of Christ in its totality. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12, it states the following in terms of why the church exists. It says the following, For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we, we exist for the edification of the body of Christ. And the word edify, the Greek word for edify, means to build up, to construct. So it's time to build up the church once again for it to function in accordance with the gifting that God has equipped us with. We really need to do two major things in the coming weeks and months. We need to reconnect and we need to rebuild. In terms of a diagnosis of the problem of the church over the last two years, when the COVID pandemic pandemic hit the world, lockdowns required for the church to continue its ministry in different ways. And once we had to shift to an electronic um, platform to be able to do that, the church has many flaws, and the church has many flaws. Let's we don't we don't want to kind of beat around the bush on that. We know the church, not KCC, but I'm talking the church universal, including KCC. We have many flaws, and it was easy to see what the church emphasized in the past as really, really important. And once COVID hit, all that seemed irrelevant. And we have to acknowledge that. We must acknowledge that there are programs that used to be seen as sacred, where we believe that unless you had this program, the church couldn't function. The church couldn't be church. But now with looking back over the last two years, we realize that that's not essential to being church. 
because of that reality, there have been many, many voices who have called for the church to be deconstructed, to find new ways of being church on a permanent basis. On a number of occasions over the last year or so, I have taught on the church as a gathered people, showing that we can never be the church if we do not gather. So what we must recognize is that we are not saying that we must find new ways of doing church just online or on some digital medium or that we only meet in small groups, something like that. We, we need to recognize that the gathering of God's people is an essential part of what it means to be church. But I'm not going to say more about that. I think I've already covered that sufficiently. But we need to recognize that the problems with the church lie not only with the church as an organism, but there are also individual problems with individual followers of Christ. The thing that we need to recognize is that lockdowns have changed habits. It has changed attitudes. And it has changed hearts. Some people have become disillusioned with God. Some have grown cold towards the Lord, while others have simply turned their backs on God. We need to accept that individual reality also. Far too many have stopped functioning and utilizing the gifts that God has given them. We need to be clear on this. Every individual believer Every individual person, in fact, every human person is given gifts from God. And when we come to faith in Christ, especially so, we need to recognize those gifts and then use them for the benefit of two main realities, for the benefit of God's created world and for the benefit of the church. And what we have seen over the last few years is that people have restricted and withdrawn and are not using their God-given gifts and abilities for the benefit of either the world or the church. Yari is an important aspect of how we, and I say we as the elders, and myself in particular, I've promoted this understanding of church since I became pastor here at KCC in 1999. I am not wanting to say, Yari is my vision of the church. This is my vision for, for Komiki Christian Church. We see that across the world, in the church across the whole world. That's the most common way, the, the leadership or the pastor who's normally an autocratic leader, says this is the vision, you fit in with it, and you all, everybody who's here, you fit in, you find a way of fitting in with the vision I have for this church. From the very beginning when I started here at KCC, I made it clear I was not ever going to do that. Instead, I understand that the church is to function on this basis. God has gifted you, God has equipped you with certain particular gifts which you are to use for exercising a ministry to God's glory. The role of the church is to support you in that. My role, our role as elders is to find out what gifts that you are wanting to exercise for the glory of God and us to support you in that to train you, equip you, establish you, provide structures for you to be able to do that, etc. This last week was really hard for me because we're facing the reality of a reduced Sunday school. And what do we do when we can't find people to, to, to fulfill that ministry? What do we do? 
Imagine if I was to manage a whole host of projects and programs. I would become a managing director, I wouldn't be a pastor. Far too often the pastor of a church is seen as a managing director of a company rather than as a pastor and a shepherd of the people. That distinction is of extreme importance for us. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16, the Apostle Paul emphasizes this combined exercising of your gifts for the working of the body of Christ when he says, from the whole body, from the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. How are we going to go about rebuilding the church? I can tell you this, we will not rebuild the church by establishing church programs. We are going to rebuild the church by you functioning in the gifts and abilities that God has given you. That's how we're going to rebuild the church. That is the only way I, before the Lord, I understand and see that we can rebuild the church and for us to becoming a functioning, whole, holistic body of Christ. It is impossible for us to have programs for the size of the church that we are in terms of social action, dealing with poverty, dealing with the age, dealing with young mothers, dealing with youth, teenage, dealing with addiction or substance abuse, having counselors available for marital issues, dealing with family issues. It, the, the, the areas of need are so vast and so great that a, a small local church, it's impossible for us to cater from a church, central church point of view, leadership point of view, to have programs for all those things. It's impossible. But nor should it ever be that way. Because your gifts and abilities is what God's going to use to minister to others and to be able to minister to God's world and in so doing be a functioning body of Christ. What we also need to recognize is that there are problems then at both a corporate level and at an individual level. And if we are going to rebuild we have to simultaneously address both corporate and individual issues. If it is time to rebuild, and it is, then we need to give attention to both individual and corporate aspects. The one cannot happen without the other. It just can't happen separately. They have to happen in, in synchronization with each other. How will the church be rebuilt corporately? By individuals functioning. How can individuals functioning? By the church functioning corporately. Those two things go together. They have to occur and happen together. What is important for us to understand and is to ask this question. What is foundational to being church? What does it mean, what are the key foundations to being church that we cannot ignore or forget about? We know that there is no building that can be built without a good foundation. And what is foundation in terms of rebuilding the church then is to understand that we can let go of all sorts of programs, ministries, gatherings, but what can we not let go of? What is essential to the nature of the church? 
what is necessary to be present for a gathering of people to be marked out as church. The book of Acts records for us the development of the church. In Acts chapter 2, verses 40 to 47, we read the following. And with many other words, he, that's Peter the apostle, testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Now listen clearly to the things that are mentioned. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. At the time of the development of the early church, preaching and teaching the word of God was primary for both believers and non-believers. At the time of the Reformation, when the church realized that it was time to rebuild, reconnect and rebuild, from which we can take a lot of lessons, at the time of the Reformation, one of the things the church looked at and said, what can we never do without? And they said, preaching. The preaching and teaching of God's word is primary to both believers and non-believers. This is a foundational mark of a true church. In Acts there was baptism and the breaking of bread. And the, the breaking of bread refers to both the, the practice of eating together but also to the celebration of the Lord's Supper. And again, at the time of the Reformation, these two things were looked at. And they just said, all right, the celebration of the sacraments of baptism and the breaking of bread are foundational to be marked out as a true church. As Peter uh, preaches on the day of Pentecost and as the response of the people is recorded for us and and this development of what the church is in Acts 2, there was also a commitment to prayer. Understanding that speaking with and listening to God was foundational for for the direction of this gathering of, of the followers of Jesus as the risen Christ under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So prayer too is a foundational criteria to being a true church. Then there was fellowship of communal living with an unwavering commitment to social action. This causes us a lot of consternation as modern day believers. And because of the difficulties difficulties around this concept of communal living and social action, it's caused for this not to be included as a foundational criteria of being church. But it is an aspect that we cannot ignore. What it means to be a community of people. What it means to be able to visit and eat and be in each other's homes is a vital aspect of what it means to be community. It really is an expression or a place whereby you can use the gifts God has given you through engaging with other believers in their places where they live, in their homes, in their apartments. That's how this aspect of communal living can be lived out.
I know the impact of a pastoral visit on a family. I know some of the difficulties faced with that. I, <laughs> I don't know why, but this example comes into my head. You visit with someone and the first thing that the parents, embarrassed parents say about the children is, you better behave! <laughs> Pastor Mike's here and if you misbehave, he's going to get you. Imagine now, whenever the child sees me, they fear me. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> but if that's an impact, imagine if there is a network of believers visiting in each other's homes, influencing and impacting each other like that. I was christened, without my knowledge, obviously. I was christened in the Hervormde Kerk. Believe it or not. All the Hervormdes are thinking, where did we go wrong with this man? <laughs> but I was christened in the Hervormde Kerk. And in the Hervormde Kerk, <clears throat> when the Dwemeni visited or the Odelung visited, they would hide their booze under their couches. And if noticed, all they had to say was, you know what, I do have a drink, but don't worry, Dwemeni, I don't enjoy it at all. Because <laughs> it was only sinful if you enjoyed it. <laughs> but how do we... How do we we, we've got to share lives together. And so although it's, it's, an, it's, it's a neglected aspect of what it means to be church, it's an important one. There was also the praising of God as a gathered people, and this praising of God happened, occurred in public spaces. In fact, it, it occurred regularly initially at the temple itself and then spread to other public places. So to praise God as the gathered people of God in a public space is integral and essential to what it means to be church. Throughout the history of the church, these elements together have been combined to express the life of the church and to help us keep them together, they've often been broadly put together under three umbrella terms, namely worship, edification, and mission. So really, as the church, we, what we can never lose sight of is worship, edification, and mission. Worship would include aspects like prayer, praising God, including music and song the exercise of the sacraments of baptism and communion, and the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Edification would include the preaching and teaching of God's Word and the fellowship of believers. This fellowship would allow for the gifts of the Spirit and the gifts that God has bestowed on each individual to be utilized for the building up of the body of Christ. Mission would involve the preaching or proclamation and teaching of God's word, of God's gospel to a world of non-believing, unbelieving people who need to hear the truth about Jesus. This would be to give expression to the command that Jesus gave in Matthew 28, which you all know so well, when Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So these three aspects are the essential characteristics of being church. And if we are going to rebuild these three aspects need to be our primary focus. 
depending on your own gifting and even your own preferences, your own personal prefer preferences, you may want to highlight worship above mission and edification. Or if you like me, you would want to highlight and emphasize edification above worship and mission. Or if you like Mark Kirby, you'd want to emphasize mission above worship and edification. What we need to see is that not one is not better than the other. We need all of them all the time. And your gifting is what gives expression to that. Not the church programs. It's your gifting that gives expression to that. We need all these aspects to be present and to function together for us to be the church. Lockdown restrictions have impacted significantly on both the corporate and individual ability to give expression to worship, edification and mission. But no more. That's not going to happen anymore. It is time to rebuild. So in conclusion, if it's time to rebuild, then it's also time to reconnect. And it's time for you to take responsibility for that reconnecting and rebuilding. Please, <clears throat> Don't wait for an elder to contact you and to ask you about how you are going to reconnect and rebuild. And I know there are some cynical voices that would say, well, you'll never hear from one anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but don't wait for an elder to contact you and ask you to reconnect and be part of rebuilding. I'm asking you this morning, to, for us all to make a shift in our hearts and minds and say, that's it, that's it, it's over. It's time to shift gear. We are going to rebuild. We are going to reconnect. And if there is something preventing you from that, then let me ask you, what are you afraid of? What are you hesitant about? Here's the reality. With vaccines available, there is no need to live in fear of COVID. We know that vaccines won't prevent you from getting COVID, but they are very effective in preventing severe disease. The possible scenarios in terms of living with COVID into the future means that we have to come to terms with the ongoing mutations of the virus, which Although experts aren't wanting to commit to that, it most likely means that the impact in causing severe disease by this virus is going to diminish and it's going to become weaker and weaker. <clears throat> but you may still be afraid of gatherings. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. You may, <clears throat> you may still be afraid of gatherings like this. Well then connect, reconnect through a small group. You may be afraid of being in a building altogether. Well then organize a prayer walk on the beach. And what's the difference between Christian fellowship and just being friends with someone? The difference between Christian fellowship and just being friends with someone is that when you get together, you pray, you sing, you worship, you read God's word together, or you use one of the gifts God has given you for the edification, the building up of the person that you're with. That's the difference between Christian fellowship and just being friends. Nothing stops you from doing that. The isolation and disconnectedness has to end. 
and only you can make that happen. That you are not utilizing or potentially not utilizing your gifts for worship, edification and mission has to come to an end. If you may not understand the impact of people not functioning on the life of a church, I can tell you <clears throat> that the elders and myself are acutely aware of that impact. Our talking as a group of elders is along these lines. We have to treat Komiki Christian Church as a church plant. It's like we have to start from scratch. And if you see, well, Mike, what's going on? Look, at, look around you. The, the number is not the issue. Here's the issue. We're not functioning the way we should. So it's time to reconnect. It's time to rebuild the life of the church. And how we utilize our individual gifts with the incredible variety that there is. We must use that. And in terms of exercising those gifts, the corporate church will benefit dramatically. And in turn, the corporate church needs to minister back to you to be able to support and encourage and direct you in that ministry. What do we not ever let go of? We don't let go of worship, edification, and mission. So my invitation to you this morning is, let us rebuild the life and function of the church. It's time to rebuild. Amen.